you know, it could well be, Vern, that if this had been any other match, Buddy Lane may have had to back out of it due to the injury, but being a shot at the title, he may have gone right. ahead perhaps against doctor's orders. Well, I certainly uh, can concur with that. He wouldn't want to uh, give this opportunity up and uh, by canceling out, but he may be paying the price here. Steve I just feel it. I've had injuries like this, too. I think all wrestlers have and wrestle with them, and boy, it is not fun. Believe me. Steve Regal's strategy from the onset has begun to do everything he can to that injured left arm and hand area of Buddy Lane as he continues with that arm bar now. Buddy Lane in obvious agony. You can probably hear the groans every time Regal increases the pressure. Referee Joe Fiorino asking Buddy Lane if he'd like to submit. Works to his feet now. Now, hip lock and rolls him right over. Takes him down to the map. And Regal, as you can see, pulling the hair. This time, though, the referee caught it, ordered the break. Well, Ken, he just working that hand over. Uh, he sees he's going to find a vulnerable spot. He's going after. He's going to stay in there. Uh, Lane has got to start moving around. Get out of the ring. Uh, don't stand in there and take it. Get Get out of there now. Get out of there. He's got 10 counts on the floor. He can jump out and get out of there. He's going to have to. Here he comes, though. Hammering away. Tenacious. Good right arm. Off the ropes they come. I had a boot to the heart area of Steve Regal. That drops Regal right to his knees. Buddy Lane trying to get circulation back in that hand. Regal, another boot to that injured area. Actually, very well, you may not respect the tactics of Steve Regal. It's perfectly legal to go after any injured area. It is, because he's doing a lot of illegal tactics uh, while he's doing this. But right now, this is a legal maneuver. Got that wrist lock. And a, certainly applying pressure. Every time Steve Regal increases that pressure, you can hear Buddy Lane, and you can see the agony on his face. Is that hand obviously injured to quite a degree coming into this match? Buddy Lane trying to cock his fist, and I guess at this point, Vern, you really can't blame him. Right, I, you really can't. He wants to punch him on either. The referee did not see that maneuver by uh, Steve Regal. He reached up, pulled the hair, Kurt, uh, Ken, and uh, down he went. Now denying it. Referee checking, but as we have said time and time again, a referee cannot call what he does not see. That's right, Ken. Uh, it's good to point that out from time to time. From our advantage and the people advantage out here in the arena, you can certainly see what's going on. But sometimes you're too close to the forest there to see the trees. Just exactly, and believe you me, opponents oftentimes make certain a referee has a poor vantage point. Well, the fans can see it. They get on the referee, but it's got to be one of the hardest jobs in the world. It certainly is, and very thankless. Again, Buddy Lane is at least able to work to his feet, but Steve Regal continuing on working on that left arm. He's slipped it up into an arm bar now. Lane has got to make some moves here. There. Hammers away at Steve Regal. Now he gets him to break it. And again and again, but Regal now rakes the fingers across the eyes of Buddy Lane. Regal goes right back after him, picks him up. Body slam, drives him into the mat. And the boot right to that injured left hand of Buddy Lane's. I think the referee's gonna ask if he wants to, wants to quit. But. 10 minutes into this spot, but for a world championship, it's a one fall 60 minute time limit. Back comes Buddy Lane. You've got to respect the resiliency of Buddy Lane. Sure do. He's now, oh, wait a minute, Regal outside the ring. Oh, as he snaps that neck area of Buddy Lane right off the top rope. Back on that hand again, Ken. He's gonna work on that thing. But Lane has got to get out of that ring for a bit to get his wits about him and get some of that. Rolls him over. Now, for a prime example, Steve Regal, very arrogant. When he goes for a pinfall, he gets that one hand up as if to show the crowd rather than hooking the leg. That's just textbook wrestling oh, to hook yeah. that leg. And you say you hit it right in the head. A bit of arrogance, which is many times your downfall. 
Back again to the arm bar. You've got to begin to worry at this point, Vern, not knowing the extent of the injury that with the beating that injured hand of Buddy Lanes is taking, that it could indeed endure permanent damage. Well, it's a good possibility. If that hand is anywhere near broken, then that is certainly going to be a long time healing. Referee. Even if it's badly bruised, which is probably the case, uh, with the way it's been worked over here tonight so far. Of course, if he can win this title, if somebody can win this title from uh, Regal, uh, it won't hurt quite as bad, Ken. <laughs> There's no question that a victory has uh, some kind of magical healing powers. But so far, in all honesty, Steve Regal, the light heavyweight champion, has been in control most of this match. Referee orders a break, but Regal again going for that hand. Now look at Buddy Lane as he whips him across the ring. Steve Regal came right off his feet. He went into that turnbuckle full force. But Buddy Lane, instead of being able to continue to work on him, trying to get circulation back to that injured hand, Regal has the opportunity to gain control once again. Oh! Hammers away on that injured hand. Buddy Lane right above us. And we can see from our vantage point that hand burn is absolutely ghostly white. Regal hammering away right above us, kicking at that hand forearm area. Burn, we got a chance to see it. Though. Certainly taking advantage here. Regal just the fingers in, of that hand, what we can see are just absolutely white. There's no circulation at all in that hand. You're right, Ken. Uh, very difficult here for uh, the young man to really look at this. Oh, Buddy Lane is able now, to roll out. He's got to make his move here, Ken. He's got to gather it all up and, and try and make that move here. Hammers away with that one good hand. Snaps him across the ropes. Back body drop and Regal hopped right over it. But Lane with a clothesline. He may have him. Kind of two. Regal is able to kick out at the last instant. Got to keep going now. He's got to keep going. Shoulder block by Lane. Regal gets to his feet. A second one by Lane. Off the ropes again. He comes a third time. Buddy Lane is almost out on his feet. They have him here. Cover. Two. Oh, Regal just, again. Just barely, Ken. I thought he had it for the three count. He's got to keep moving here on him. He's got to keep moving. Come on in. Climb him if you can. Off the ropes again they come. Oh! A flying elbow to the sternum area. Regal is down. Lane again to the cover. Two. Oh! Again, just Regal. two. I thought he had it for three, Ken. I'm sorry to butt in like this, but I, I thought it was. A, I thought he had it for the three count. Kicked out at the last possible instant. Oh, tremendous chop! I we can hear it clear across the arena. Look at Buddy Lane. Regal begging for mercy. Now, Buddy's the time to go, and away he comes. The purple people here in the arena, certainly behind the young man out of Winnipeg, Canada. Hammering Regal's head into the turnbuckle. Now he whips him across into that other turnbuckle. Oh! Buddy Lane went in for the kill, and Regal gave him a boot to the chin area. Oh! Two, three times, Burns. Steve Regal was on the brink of losing that light heavyweight championship. I thought that one uh, time he had him there, that the three count was there, but the referee said no. It's about two and three quarters, I believe. Regal still going to work on that hand. Look. Now, wait a minute. He's up on that oh, second boy. line. The referee trying to order him down. What's he going to do? Oh. Oh. Drop that elbow on that hand. Bring that down. Now, wait a minute, the referee is calling for the bell. Oh, Regal continuing to hammer away. I don't know why he's ringing the bell. All right, we just heard from referee Joe Fiorino. He is called a halt to the match. Stopping it, ruling that Buddy Lane is unable to continue. That hand just giving him too much pain. The referee stopped the match. I don't think Lane gave up. He was not pain here, but I think the referee's on upon himself to stop this match. Now, uh, referee... Unusual, unusual, but... Maybe he's right. Uh, uh, with that last blow off the... Look at this. 
Steve Regal has won the match, continues to try and do perhaps permanent damage to that left hand of Buddy Here Ray. Here coming off the rope onto that, drop that elbow right on the hand. I think this will fit it for the referee. Again, took it upon himself, again, he stopped the match. I can't say as I blame him, King. How can a guy, 5'9", have an unfair advantage over these guys? I use the Gillette app for Razor. They don't. It's got the advantage of a pivoting head. Atra is better than twin blade razors that don't pivot. See? They don't always stay in my beard. But my Atra pivots to keep both blades on my beard longer. So I get a better shave. Close. Comfortable. Get the Gillette Atra and get the Atra advantage. Sometimes a little advantage goes a long way. When you first see the Mazda RX-7, you begin to understand why it has become a legend among today's sports cars. Because beyond its classic styling, you soon discover the orthopedic perfection of its bucket seats and experience its comprehensive instrumentation. You feel the preciseness of its five-speed overdrive. Those things alone help make it an exceptional value. But to gain an even deeper understanding of the RX-7, you're going to have to experience roads like these for yourself. Mazda RX-7. Quick thinking, timing, agility, and brute strength are qualities that every karate fighter must possess. On TSN's Full Contact Karate, the best in North America get a chance to compete in this popular ring sport. The action is always fast and furious on TSN's Full Contact Karate, each Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, here on the Sports Network. Now, certainly, ladies and gentlemen, over these past few months, one of the most popular wrestlers to appear here on TSN, none other than the Clawmaster, Baron Von Raschke. There's been a tremendous response from you great fans regarding the Baron, and at this time, Baron, if you will, because coming up a bit later on, you will see Baron Von Raschke to meet former heavyweight champion of the world, Nick Bockwinkle, and Baron, without a doubt, a win over a man like Nick Bockwinkle with his record would certainly propel you to be first or second in line for a shot at the world's heavyweight championship. Das is richtig. You know, Herr Nick Bockwinkel was the champion for many, many years. He's an excellent wrestler, very skilled in the profession. And like you said, it is true, a win over Nick Bockwinkel would put me in a spot. Perhaps for the world single title. Perhaps for a chance for the World Tag Team title. You know, it's the start of a new year. And I can hardly wait to get into the ring tonight with Herr Nick Bockwinkel to show the people, to show the promoters around Canada and around the world just what Baron Von Reschke is made of. I'm coming here for one purpose, to compete, compete with all of my ability and to get my chance either for the World single title or the world tag team title it's the start of 1985 and it's going to be a very good year for baron von raschka because i'm taking the bull by the horns i'm going to be master of my own fate and that's really all the people need to know now baron as you i'm certain are aware nick bockwinkle is willing to do almost anything within or outside of the rules to win a match how do you go about preparing to meet a man like bockwinkle you know, I've forgotten more tricks than he knows. Nick Bockwinkle, I came up the hard way. I learned all the rules, and I learned all the ways around the rules. If you have a trick, I have a counter trick. If you have a hold, I have a counter hold. But don't worry, Nick Bockwinkle. I'm not going to be sitting back waiting for you to act. I'm going to be reacting before you have a chance. I'm coming out of the blocks with one purpose in mind, and that's to defeat you in the ring and to show the people once and from all where Baron Von Raschke is coming from and where he's going. 1985, it's the Baron's year. I'm coming, and that's all you need to know. All right, wrestling fans, again, remember, coming up later today, the Clawmaster to meet Nick Bockwinkle. 
Stay with us. You won't want to miss that one. Train is not a physical thing, it's a concept. It's waking up in the morning and finding that your house is warm because the oil is there, that your cornflakes are there. Someone has moved all of these things to you. It's then that you appreciate the concept. Well, transportation is an integral part of, of everything that we do, everything that we, that we purchase. It is real, without transportation, you wouldn't have any economy. Just like the father of the country keeps the whole thing together, it really does, it makes our land. When you hear that distant whistle song and the steel wheel down the track, there's bread on the table and clothes on your back. The freight we all take for granted is heading here on time. The best things in life are all aboard the CP Railway Line. I work the CP Railway Line. I go where the steel rail guides me. I'm bound to haul a heavy load down an independent road. I work the CP Railway Line. CP Helping Canada move forward. On Sunday, February 3rd, starting at 4 p.m. Eastern, the Sports Network presents an international boxing special, Canada versus Scotland. Having done very well against the English and the Welsh, the Canadian team hopes to maintain a successful record against the Scots. International boxing, always exciting. Be sure to join us Sunday, February 3rd at 4 p.m. Eastern for all the action in the various weight divisions here on the Sports Network. We now take you to the Winnipeg Arena for an exciting classic wrestling match from the past. Superstar Billy Graham, certainly one of the legends of wrestling out of Paradise Valley, Arizona. Lanza with a quick step around and he goes right to work. Blackjack Lanza often referred to as the meanest man in professional wrestling. Has become a crowd favorite since the infamous slap right here in Winnipeg it's from his former manager Bobby Heenan. Although he is a favorite of the crowd, Blackjack Lanza is every bit as mean and tough as he's ever been. Referee Dave Muir pushes him back, telling him he's got to give Superstar Graham time to get back into the ring. Billy Graham now as dangerous as ever. He's mastered the art of Taekwondo, master of the martial arts. Lanza will step around. Graham trying to break it with pure strength. 270 pounds, superstar Billy Graham. And he's able to break Lanza's hold. The tremendous strength, biceps and arms of superstar Billy Graham. One of the most powerful men in all of wrestling today. Lanza again from behind. Tremendous pressure on the midsection of the superstar. And Graham seeks the sanctuary of the ropes, sneaks an elbow into the head of Lanza. Now Graham ordered to break the chokehold on Blackjack Lanza. Refusing to break the hold now, he throws him headfirst into the turnbuckle. Again, the second time, neither man is known to strictly obey the rules. Graham again with a shot to the head of Lanza. And Blackjack is back in control, and Graham again goes outside of the ropes. 
not wanting to face the fire of one Blackjack Lanza. Lanza out of Laredo, Texas. Graham outside the ring now, engaging the fans here at ringside in conversation. Now he's reaching. Graham now reaching underneath the ring. Throwing one of the large weighted signs into the ring. Referee Dave Muir is able to get it out. Lanza immediately going for him as he crawls in. Lanza with a, looks to be a chokehold of his own. Obviously saying an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Lanza again breaks to the count of three, immediately resumes the chokehold. Now referee Dave Muir is able to get him back. Graham trying to catch his breath. Lanza immediately back after his opponent. Lanza now with a shot to the chin, a haymaker pulled right out of right field. Obviously stuns the superstar. And another shot from Black Jack Lanza. Lanza with a headlock. And just grinds away at the head of superstar Billy Graham. Dave Muir checking with Superstar Graham to see if he wants to give. Nothing doing in the part of the legendary Superstar Billy Graham. Off the rope they come, shoulder blocked by Lanza, sends Graham reeling. And this time Blackjack runs smack into the elbow of Superstar right in the throat. A knee to the head of Blackjack Lanza and again. Graham now using the ropes for leverage, driving that knee into the throat of Blackjack Lanza. Refusing to break the hold. Now Graham outside of the ring. And a shot to the throat of Blackjack Lanza, and again. Now, Superstar going with a cord from the PA, wrapping it around the throat of Blackjack Lanza, still outside the ring. Referee Dave Muir unable to break the hold. Graham with a cord from here at ringside of the public address system. Now, Referee Dave Muir is able to get it away from him. Blackjack Lanza obviously in agony, unable to catch his breath. Graham back in and going right after his opponent. A shot to the throat of Blackjack Lanza. Lanza, now Graham wraps him around his throat, around the ropes, and is sitting on him. That rope just cut, cutting off all wind to Blackjack Lanza. Graham virtually refusing the warnings of referee Dave Muir. Now Lanza comes right out on our table. Blackjack goes right back into the ring. Graham again with a knee to the head. A fist to the midsection of superstar Graham by Blackjack Lanza. Off the ropes he comes. And a bear hug by superstar Graham. There you see the tremendous arms and biceps on Billy Graham virtually crushing the ribs of Blackjack Lanza. Lanza in obvious agony as Superstar continues to grind away at the midsection and ribs of Blackjack Lanza. Crowd egging Blackjack Lanza on to try and break this hold. Referee Dave Muir checking if he wants to give it up. Almost, Lanza almost out from the tremendous pressure being applied to the rib cage by one superstar, Billy Graham. Dave Muir asking a big cowboy out of Dorado, Texas, if he wants to give Lanza now up on his feet. Graham still with that bear hug. Lanza hammering away at the back of Black Graham. 
Again and again, he hammers away, trying to break this hole. Now under the chin of Superstar, and he breaks free. Both wrestlers staggered. Lanza unable to breathe while in that bear hug. Superstar again to the bear hug. Lanza tries to break the hold, but he's unsuccessful. Now you see Graham going to the trunk for added leverage. Referee Dave Muir unable to see it. Into the corner now. And Graham drives him into the turnbuckle. A tremendous beating being taken by Blackjack Lanza. And again, every time he's in that barrack, he can hardly breathe from the pressure on his ribs. But back comes the big cowboy. A fist and then a knee to boot to the midsection. Oh, a shot to the back of the neck of superstar Billy Graham. Now there you see Graham unwrapping the tape from his hand. And now he's got Lanza all wrapped up, that choking him with that tape off his wrist. Referee Dave Muir checking now. He orders Superstar to break the hold. Eyes just tape in his back pocket. The referee still hasn't seen it. Lanza trying desperately to catch his breath. Superstar stalking him from behind. And Lanza with an eye gouge, an eye for an eye. There you see Lanza with the tape now. Turn about his fair play. And he wraps up Superstar Graham in his own, a bit of his own medicine. <laughs> Referee Dave Muir is the break. Now he whips him right into the turnbuckle with that tape. Referee finally gets it away. But Blackjack Lanza is on a roll. Superstar down asking for mercy. Showing none by the big cowboy. Fist to the midsection and back of the neck of Superstar Graham across the road. And a sweep. And there it is, a Texas Brain Buster by Blackjack Lanza. This could be it. Graham goes for the rope. And Lanza is forced to break the hold. Ten minutes. Where is ten minutes? Karate chops to the back of the neck by Superstar Graham. Both men have taken a tremendous beating in this match. And Lanza with a boot to the midsection. Graham waiting for a monkey flip, but Lanza with a boot. Knee to the sternum, counted two and three. There is a pinball by the big cowboy out of Laredo, Texas. professional wrestling as anyone could be. Now, again, back in the ropes, and Nick Bockwinkle, surprisingly, Vern breaks very cleanly. Well, uh, maybe two reasons. One, he's trying to let the, the Baron think that he may be wrestling clean, but the Baron knows better than that. Or he's fearful of what the Baron may do to him if he does make a move. <laughs> very good point. Again, the two men feeling each other out center of the ring, card elbow hookup. And Bockwinkle again backs the Baron into the ropes. And this time it's the Nick Bockwinkle we know as he hammers away at Baron Von Rasky with a series of forearms to the head and sternum area of the Clawmaster. Now the boot to the midsection. And again. Bockwinkle now becoming very aggressive. Well, he took uh, again. Ooh. I don't know if the microphone picks those blows up or not, but... When you're in there wrestling, you feel them and you hear them, but you don't know whether anybody else can really feel them. But when you're sitting this close, you hear them so, and they really hang in there and out or in, and you really get the force of it. Here's Baron, or uh, Baron is Baron all, all hanging up, up in the ropes there, 
trying to pull himself back in. Ah, Bockwinkle that's gonna let him. Now, referee finally gets Bockwinkle to go to the neutral corner. And Barrett trying to come back in. Bockwinkle, the knee to the midsection, and a second wow. one. Not trying, trying not to let the Baron get back into the ring. Baron now drops out on the floor here at the arena. Capacity crowd on hand for this one. Nick Bockwinkle coming over and giving you uh, some chiding remarks, Vern Gagne. Yeah, something about the scientific side of wrestling, and that's certainly not, not it there. I think he hurt his hand, though, when he tried to pound uh, the Baron here in the head. Wrong well, place to hit it. It's very Don't odd. make that big German mad, Bockwinkle. I think your tactics here are ridiculous. Choking the Baron out across the bottom rope. Vern, it's obvious there is still no love lost between you and Nick Bockwinkle. No, there really isn't. This guy has an arrogant uh, personality. I have to respect him for his wrestling ability. He don't have to rely on these tactics, but he does it because he likes it. Now, Vern, that's an excellent point. Nick Bockwinkle, even though he's not showing it, is a very great scientific wrestler when he wants to be. Yes, he is. His father was a great wrestler. Following his footsteps. Look at the Baron. Now, he's look at the expression on the claw master. I think Nick Bockwinkle, if you will, has awakened a sleeping giant. Now, but Bockwinkle having a win, and it has no effect on the Baron. Don't oh. hit the Baron in the head. It only makes him mad. Oh. Now, look at this. Here comes the Clawmaster. Oh, a haymaker and another one. Bockwinkle into the corner. Baron continues to hammer away. Now he whips him across the ring. Into that turnbuckle. Burn that ring had to move a foot. Baron hammers away. Forearm after forearm. Bockwinkle drops to his knees. Now, Baron again on the other side. You can hear the crowd counting along. Ten times, and down goes the former champion. That's a lot of pounding, uh, Ken. Even though that turnbuckle is padded somewhat, uh, that's, those chains still stick out, and you get one of those in the head, you can suffer severe cuts from that turnbuckle. And now the Barons turn about his fair play as he is choking Mr. Bockwinkle, dishing out a little of his own medicine. Well, Bockwinkle, as you said, aroused the sleeping giant. And you just don't do it. I can't understand why Bockwinkle started with those tactics. Nick Bockwinkle weighed in for this one at 248. The Baron at 291. Bockwinkle, Bockwinkle giving up. Bockwinkle just returned from a, of a, a three week tour of Japan. A very successful tour. One Vern guy, which I understand, Nick Bockwinkle defeated Jumbo Tsuruta, the former world champion. Bockwinkle obviously out after one Rick Martell. Oh, no doubt about that. And Baron, now Baron goes into that reverse chin lock. Baron's a very supple, powerful man. Uh, by supple, I mean. It's hard to pin him. He's very loose. It seems that uh, his shoulders are double jointed, I believe. And he's just he's very hard to hold down. He's also deceivingly heavy. A tremendous amount of weight in his big thighs, big heavy legs. Exactly. Many men that weigh in at close to 300 pounds have an obvious a protruding midsection, we'll say, but not so on the Baron. Like I was mentioned, he weighed in at 291. It's a two wrestlers trade blows to the corner of the ring. Into that turnbuckle by the Baron. One thing again, I'm going to repeat it, but I, the when he the, the blows that I, I don't realize as a wrestler when you're in there wrestling. The that, sleeper hold by Bachwinkle. Now this burn, as you mentioned, totally cuts off the blood supply to the brain. It's a very numbing effect. Yes, it does. It, uh, you put pressure, of course, on the carotid artery, uh, which carries the flow of the blood to the brain. And for not getting oxygen up there, you're not going to last too long. Now he's got great leverage on the Baron's neck. He's, he's the top of the head, good shot here. Now that hand, that arm, that forearm can't go across the throat. Baron drops. He's got to watch that closely. Bachwinkle will slide it across if he can. Now, Bird, very quickly, the difference between the Ganya and the Bachwinkle sleeper. Well, right now, there is no difference at all. My, that's the way I always applied my sleeper, usually. Bachwinkle sleeper is more with the 
hand on the forehead and the front part of the head. But I don't think he felt he good enough leverage. He's even the way I used to use it then. He may have them here. This is a very difficult thing to get out of, if not impossible, once you're off balance the way the, <coughs> the uh, Baron is. Now look at the Baron. He's up to his knees. He's trying to get to his feet. That's about the only way man. to break that sleeper bird. He is a very, very powerful man. But whether, whether he can yeah. withstand that before he can come out with something, and I don't know. The Baron's trying to get that claw, but I mean, he's got him. We've almost got a Mexican standoff. The sleeper hold by Bachwinkle, the claw by the Baron. Which will win out here, Ken? I'm telling you, into the ropes, he got to break. The referee has to break it. The Baron drove him back into the ropes. And he's not letting go. What? Referee now right here to break. But the Baron has done the damage. Both men out of it right now. Trying to recover from those painful submission holds. Baron trying to gather his wrists. Possibly go suffering the effects of that claw hold. Now the boot to the midsection. You can hear that one all over. Again and again, Bachwinkle continues to kick away at the midsection of the Baron. Forearm to the side of the head. And out of the sternum area. Right above us, they continue to ham Bachwinkle, hammering away. Flying Mayor takedown. He goes for the cover. Baron kicks him off at the count of one. Uh, that sleeper hole remind me uh, of Whipper Billy Watson. He used to use that hole also. Now, Bachwinkle trying to set him up for the pile driver, but he can't quite get him up. Now he's got him. Oh! oh. I didn't think he'd get the, the weight because of uh, Barron's weight in the legs there. Look, this may be a... Count no. two, Barron is able to get his foot over the lower rope. The referee, Joe Fiorino, calls for the break. Now what's Bachwinkle going to do? Barron got the leg out of the way, and Bachwinkle comes down right on his own knee. Look at the resiliency of Baron Von Raske has withstood a pile driver and the sleeper early on in this match. Picks him up. The atomic drop. Now, here comes the claw master. Going for the elbow smash, and he's got him. Bachwinkle trying to sit up now. Baron picks him up. He whips him across the ring. Oh, a knee to the midsection. Bachwinkle literally flew right over the top of him. Baron picks him up again. Rims his head into the turnbuckle. And again, here it caught him with the crowd. Ten times. And Nick Bachwinkle does not know where he is at this point. Black takedown. And uh -oh. then, here he goes, Ken. Here he goes. The Baron setting him up for the claw. Bachwinkle turned away. He's able to avoid it now. Into the turnbuckle goes Bachwinkle. There it is. Bachwinkle. Tremendous gets. pressure on the temple area there. Ten minutes Watch. into this bout. Bachwinkle's only escape where he was able to fall back into the ropes. I got it again, Ken. Tremendous pressure now on the Bachwinkle. Going for the ropes again. Ooh. The Baron ran into that turnbuckle. Not like a Nick Bachwinkle. He's using his foot on the middle rope strand. The referee didn't see it. The count of three. And there it is. Nick Bachwinkle oh gaining the match. Burned totally illegally. Without a doubt. I don't, I don't know if the camera caught it here or not. The Bachwinkle's leg was definitely on that rope getting leverage. Now let's... Now the Baron is trying to explain to the referee just exactly what Bachwinkle did. But as we have mentioned, a referee cannot call what he there, doesn't he see. That, he put a dent in that turnbuckle. You can see it right there when he hit it with his, with his face. The that, goes, there, goes the, there goes the leg on the rope. You can see it here. And it was the one, now, two, three. Back to live action. The Baron hammering away at Bachwinkle. Throws him into the ropes. There's the claw. The match is over, but the Baron is not one to give up without a fight. He's got that claw on Bachwinkle. Bachwinkle trying to crawl right out underneath the ropes. And does so. It's obvious well, Nick Bachwinkle wanting no more part of the No more. No, you're right, Ken. No part of that. 
whatsoever. The Bar oh, Baron, don't do it, don't. This could be a fine or suspension, Baron. Don't touch that official. Don't touch it. Now, there's the sportsmanlike gentleman the Baron is. They really frowned upon that, Ken. There is just no way. The Baron backed off, but Bernie, you really can't blame him losing a match like that with a totally illegal maneuver. Well, we certainly think that uh, there was a devil to pay here by Nick Bockwinkle with that foot on the rope. And I can't blame the Baron for being mad, but one thing, you don't touch the official. You'll have to file official protest if you'd like.